Um, oh, and uh, yes, I am going to uh, ask. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, what are we? Uh, uh, so, um, we are uh, going to. Uh, talk I'm sorry. About I forgot to say one thing. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, we have the notes for some of the talks uh, already on the Google Drive, and I will send the link in a moment in the chat. And so this talk specifically doesn't have uh, notes, but uh, for other talks we have notes, and you can look at them while we're uh, uh, giving the talks. So I just sent them. Sorry. Okay. So um, so what is so what is the uh, uh, problem that uh, we are uh, um, we are uh, um, uh, thinking of? So. So the question we are we we, uh, we 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 the question we want to answer, the thing that we are attempting to understand is the following. So let's say we have a system of equation. System. Of equation. To share, share screen. Uh, I didn't share the screen. No. Oh. Ah. So uh, only host can share in this meeting. Now everyone can share screen. Now in very precise. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Still didn't show the screen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm working on it. Boop. 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 And I have 45 minutes, right? Something like this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So we have a system of polynomial equations. Defined over a, 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 some finite field F Q. Okay. Um, and I'm going to denote the system of equations by X. And uh, uh, so, for example, uh, let's do an example. So uh, we can have uh, uh, the, equa the equation in uh, two variables, x and y, over the field of uh, three elements, which is, uh, uh, let's say, y squared equals x cubed. Uh, uh, oops. Minus x plus one, let's say. Okay. And... Uh, Let's call this equation E prime. And here's another example of equation. We have uh, X, Y, and Z over the field of two elements. And the equation is X plus Y equals one. And uh, X plus Z equals zero. And uh, um, Another equation. Uh, it's going to be defined uh, with uh, one variable over the field of five elements, and it's the equation zero equals zero. Okay, so um, now. Um, um, and looking at the, at the system of equations, uh, we know that the modern uh, perspective of, uh, of uh, thinking about the system of equations, of polynomial equation, is uh, uh, through the realm of algebraic geometry, is as a scheme. So um, given any algebra over our field S, uh, so we have a functor, so given a system of equations, so E prime, for example, uh, gives us a functor from a, 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 a commutative algebras uh, uh, under the, uh, our field FQ, which means just rings with a map from FQ, two sets, uh, uh, um, sending an algebra R, 
to the set of solutions. Um, and uh, this, this correspondence uh, is functorial in the sense that uh, if I have a map of rings, then I get a map of solutions. And um, not, not uh, all, uh, um, not all, uh, uh, um, uh, not all such functors uh, are come from a system of. Uh, uh, not all such functors come from a, a system of finitely many. So I'm thinking about finitely many variables and finitely many uh, polynomials. Okay, not all possible functors like this come from so solving uh, uh, solving solutions. Um, uh, in fact, um, um, those are exactly the functors that uh, preserves all limits and all filtered colleagues. Those are exactly those that come from uh, systems of equations. Um, but algebraic geometry tells us that it's a good idea uh, to consider more general, uh, 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 more general such functors, which, uh, which should be thought of as, as gluing those kinds of, so those are called affine schemes and we can glue affine schemes for more general schemes. I'm not gonna go back very much to the language of algebraic geometry, if there's something which is unclear, please ask, but I assume that this is somehow just uh, uh, retelling something that to some extent you see. Um, the most somehow important that we just say are projective uh, uh, schemes. And in this case, what we are given is a bunch of homogeneous equations in x zero, x uh, uh, to a system of homogeneous variables and we consider solutions that um, we, we, we consider uh, systems uh, of, of homogeneous solutions which are zero up to a scalar. So that's another uh, up, to, up to multiplying by invertible scalar form. Okay? Okay, so uh, uh, um, this is, th these are projective varieties and those are fine varieties and those um, other possibilities. The game that we are playing today is that we are given either, a, we, give, we are given some algebraic variety X, we find over our field of Q, and it's easy to see that uh, um, X F Q is finite. Right? There's only finitely many, right? In, in fact, if, if the number of variables is n, the number of, solu number of solutions is most definitely smaller than q to the n. So this is, a, 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 um, uh, this is some finite number, uh, the number of solutions. And uh, uh, we can also look at, for every n, there exist a unique extensions of degree n over our field of Q. So we can look at F oops, Q to the n. Uh, maybe I should draw uh, D probably, is a better name, given the notations is gonna appear later. Q to the D. And the number of points is smaller than Q to the D to the n. So it's some, it's, it's some finite sequence, okay? So let's uh, denote by a, 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 by a x, by a x d to be this size. So uh, this is some sequence of integers. And the question is, how does it behave? Okay. So let's, uh, uh, let's look at the, uh, uh, let's look at, let's look at the examples that we had before. So we had the uh, y uh, over here. We had van variable that can admit any value and, and a trivial equation. So, um, so we can write down that a, 
a d y oh y equals q to the d um another uh, option is uh, is the uh, 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 or maybe I should say because I should be five to the day. Of course, it doesn't matter which field I'm doing it over, but I chose five, so that's that's, that's inconsistent. What about what we denoted by x here? So we have here a linear equation: x plus y equals one, x plus z equals zero. This means that uh, it, I can choose x however I want, and it will completely determine y and z. So once again, um, I get. Um, very simple formula. This is two to the D. Um, a little bit more algebraically minded, algebraic geometrically minded, uh, X is isomorphic to A1 over F2, and Y is isomorphic to A1 over F5. And, uh, and, and this is this, this property of how many points is invariant under isomorphism. Mm. And the, generally speaking, if I'm looking at a n, the number of f q to the d points, this, this set is canonically in bijections, right? It's, it's just vectors, like this. So the size, So in complete generality, it is true that A, A, N, F, Q, D is Q to the D. Okay. Okay, now let's, let's talk about our, uh, our E prime. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, E prime, let's okay. is y is the equation y square equals x cubed minus x plus one. So um, you know you can count how many this is this is a doable do, doable this is a finite process. Um, so I can let's let's look at the sequence that you get. So a one e prime. Uh, six and a one two e prime is also six and a three e prime uh, is twenty seven and a four e prime is ninety and a five e prime is two hundred and sixteen. Six e prime, seven hundred and eighty-three. Um, so, okay. seven e prime, seven six. Okay, so we can you can continue right this this sequence of numbers, and. Um, and, uh, uh, um, and how does it uh, look like? Well, um, if, if, if you look at it, um, you can see that uh, the numbers that, that, you look, uh, that you see here are, uh, um, are generally of more or less size three to the D. Right, so if you look at the, Right, so if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm going to write three to the d next to it, um, uh, um, so if I'm if I'm if I'm writing this. Uh, uh, Three to the d next to it, you see that it's 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 very close, relatively, right? Um, and this shouldn't surprise us very much because what happened here is that we we could have chose a, a two 
uh, elements from the field of size Q to the D. And then we have computed these two sides, which gave us an element in F uh, Q to the D. And we need the equation to hold. So if we are kind of thinking randomly, um, you know, we, we should uh, um, somehow expect that uh, the number of the uh, uh, solution should be more or less uh, Q to the D. Um, there's, you choose two, there's the, 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 the chance out of the Q to the 2D possible choices for X to Y, about one over Q to the D going to actually be a solution. Of course, this is not a precise answer, uh, but we can uh, subtract um, this, um, this thing from this. So uh, we get here uh, three, and here we get uh, uh, minus three. No, wait, uh, yes, minus three, and here we get zero. Now we're going to get nine, and uh, uh, here we get uh, minus 27. And, uh, uh, and maybe I'm going to do one more. Uh, here we get uh, 54. Okay? And uh, okay, let's do the minus 81. Okay, so those are the. Those are the number of uh, uh, those are the number of uh, uh, points. One, you reduce this uh, 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 free free to the D, and uh, um, you can ask to try to try to have a better understanding of uh, um, of this uh, um, of the pattern that you see here. Okay. Um, so, um, well, maybe I, I should ask first. Is, is someone someone sees it? So someone sees a pattern. There are unlikely many powers of three in the list. But... <laughs> okay. So let me let me let me. Uh, 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 let me show you. Uh, what happens here is that the sum of uh, the, uh, the value at here is the sum of those two things times minus three. The value here is the sum of those two things min times minus three. The value here is the sum of those two things minus minus three. The value here is the sum of those two things times minus three, etc., etc., etc. So the the, the, the formula is that a n plus two d prime minus three. Uh, let's uh, let's use d. Uh, so okay, let, let's call this let's call this uh, sequence b. I guess so. I don't want to carry everything here. So b d um, plus two equals minus three b d plus one plus b d. That's the, that is being satisfied. And it continues to be to be satisfied. Um, so what does that what does that actually uh, tell us? Well, we you know uh, it looks like a Fibonacci sequence uh, with with slightly different uh, slightly different uh, uh, parameters. Uh, um, so uh, we know that Fibonacci like sequences are some are just sums of, uh, of um, uh, um, geometric sequences, which are a solution of the polynomial that you get by writing, by writing this, right? So how do you solve it? You're saying, well, let's assume that BD, uh, BD equals lambda to the D, and then you substitute, so you get lambda to the D plus two equals minus three, lambda to the D plus one, plus lambda to the d, you divide by lambda to the d, and you get that lambda squared plus three, plus three lambda, plus three equals zero. And then you solve this, so this is uh, minus three plus minus square root of uh, 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 
9 minus 12 divided by 2, right? So you get the minus 3 plus minus 3 root of minus 3 divided by 2, lambda 1 and 2. And then you're just saying that this is some, this is some linear combination of lambda 1 to the d and lambda 2 to the d. And uh, uh, in fact, you can, you can check that uh, uh, the, the correct formula is B, BD yeah. is uh, 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 just the sum of those two things. That's all. Um, so to conclude, ADE prime uh, equals a, a three to the D minus lambda one to the D minus lambda two to the D. Okay. That is a very, uh, uh, this is a very interesting, this is a very, ah, uh, uh, okay, that's a very interesting uh, 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 observation. And, uh, and the, uh, the um, um, so, so what we get is that there's a sum and difference of um, geometric se sequences. And uh, uh, the, the veil conjectures, um, the first statement of the veil conjectures uh, is that this is always true. So, so for every, for every, for every x variety over a finite field of q, there exists a collection of numbers uh, and alpha one to alpha m, and beta one to beta k, it depends on x, such that what we call a x d is just the sum, the alpha i's to the d minus the sum of the beta j's to the d. Okay. So this is something that we kind of empirically seen in very few examples here, but uh, you know you can you can check that this is true. Um, okay, now so the first statement is going to be uh, that this is true in general, and uh, the second statement of the Veil conjecture, or the rest of the statement of the Veil conjecture, uh, what can be said about those eigenvalues? So the first thing I want to I want to do is I want to I want to say something about how to encode this information. So there's a, essentially, we have those alphas and, and betas, and we, wanna, and, and, and we want to encode, uh, encode this information in a systematic way. Now, um, how do you encode such an information? So first of all, you need to encode a bunch, of, a bunch of numbers. And oh, and maybe it should say that all of those are algebraic integers. So those are solutions to, to monic polynomials uh, with, uh, with coefficients in uh, uh, um, uh, with coefficients in, uh, in, in, in the integers. Okay. But anyway, let's say that someone gave you um, a bunch of numbers. How do you encode them in a unique way? Uh, given that note that the order of the alpha i's doesn't matter. Right, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an old trick for that. If you want to give me a collection of numbers, maybe there's repetitions, um, but you don't care about the order, you can just encode their, uh, 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 you, can, you can encode their uh, uh, polynomial. That is, that is an information that contains exactly, if I'm looking at the information of x, and I'm looking at this, this, this contains exactly the information of, of the alpha i's without, we are not, without worrying about the old. However, uh, uh, there is something to note about those alpha i's, which is that um, not only permuting the alpha i's doesn't matter, right? Because we only care about this, this formula. Also adding a zero doesn't matter, right? Because if I'm adding here zero to the d, that 
doesn't change the answer. So, uh, but this is not true when I'm looking at this kind of a polynomial, right? Because adding a zero will, will multiply by x. So, um, so if I want something that really kind of only depends on, on, this, on this sum, let's say that I don't have the negative part yet, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I don't, and I don't want to have an additional, uh, uh, you know, some, some additional choice, well, I can, I can do this by doing a slight variant of, of this by instead of multiplying x minus alpha i, I can multiply one minus. Uh, Tonal, uh, let yes. me suggest that you use the variable t and not the Yes, this is, exactly what I, this is exactly what I just now realized. I was exactly about to do it because I just realized that it would be smarter. Okay, so instead I can look at the polynomial uh, p of t which is the product of one minus t alpha i. That's, it has the same, uh, it, it, it has the same nice, uh, it, it, it knows uh, uh, the same kind of information. It's just rearranged, but note that if one of the, if I, if I choose some alpha i to be zero, this multiplies by one, so it doesn't see it. Okay, so that's, that's a way to keep the information um, in the way that I want. Now I have my uh, collections of betas, and the collection of betas um, also can be noted by another polynomial. Uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Qt, which is the product of one minus t beta i. Bad. It's very bad. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, my iPad was smashed to pieces in the weekend. That's somehow disturbs its ability to uh, detect the pen. Okay, um, okay, and one last thing. Um, okay, so now I wanna, I wanna keep the, those two informations. Uh, do I have any other kind of invariance here? Well, uh, I, so I wanna remember those two polynomials, but, but not really, right? Because another, another maneuver that I can do, which, is, which is, doesn't change the function, is I can add the same number, uh, both to the positive part and to the negative part. And that, that's not going to change uh, the value. And this can be encoded by looking at the rational function, p divided by q. Um, I think the standard way is the other way around, maybe? Yes, that, yes you're right. I'm, I'm going to, yes. So let's do q divided by p. Yes, you want. Uh, q divided by p. Um, uh, because now, right, um, if, I, if I'm looking at the quotient of two polynomials, um, there's a unique way to describe it as a quotient of polynomials so that they don't have a common factor. And if I add the same factor to, to both of them, it cancels out. So this rational function, so z of z t of x, it's called the zeta function. It's a rational function that encodes um, those alphas and betas. But note that I don't know yet that, uh, uh, <laughs> that I haven't actually proved to you my, my statement or my Vail's conjecture that it's always have this structure. So what is the relationship between Z and this AD to the X, ADX? Well, um, let's see. So uh, we, 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 uh, uh, we can uh, look, um, so this thing, right, is the product of the one minus beta t minus beta, a, beta j times t divided by one minus alpha j t. And I want to somehow relate it to this ADXs. Well, let's take the logarithm on both sides. Well, this, need, this needs to be or minus of the logarithm better. Uh, this needs to be the sum of uh, 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 the logarithms of one minus uh, um, alpha it minus the sum of the logarithm of um, minus one minus beta jt, right? Um, 
So this is this this is what I uh, 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 so. But now the logarithm of one minus alpha j t, right? I I know what it is. It's the sum of alpha j to the d t to the d divided by d, right? So I get the sum of j minus the sum of and the sum on, on ah this is i j the sum on d beta j d t to the d divided by d rearranging what I get. Uh, I think you're missing the minus. Uh, you actually don't need the minus on the. You're expanding minus log minus minus log. One minus something. Okay, maybe I did. Okay, possibly. Um, I thought I, I thought I did it correctly, but 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 it's very possible that I didn't. Anyway, we get a a, a d x t to the d divided by d. Right. Equals a, a, the logarithm of z of t x. Are you sure? I think I should have my minus here. Log of one minus six is like minus six. So. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have I have some sign that I'm missing here. I'm 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 not going to waste the time trying to uh, find it. The point is that I get the following equation. Z is given like this. Now. Thank you. To relate the two things to uh, a to the d, maybe you should remind it. Yes. Yeah, so the reason is because I reorganized, so I get that the coefficient of t to the d was something divided d. What was it? It was the sum of alpha j to the d minus the sum of beta j i to the d, right? Which was my a d. That's exactly how I thought. Of, this is how I define define those alphas and betas. Okay. So. The upshot is that I can define, I think there should be a minus here. I'm trying to remember in the formula there should be a minus. Am I wrong? You don't need a minus in the exponent. You don't, don't need a minus. Okay, so I was just confused. Okay, fine. Okay, so we get this, this equation. And, and now we can, now this definition, uh, the, the previous definition that I gave depend on me knowing that um, that uh, those the, the sequence of uh, the number of points is really a sum and difference of uh, of of eigen of 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 geometric sequences, but uh, uh, but this definition doesn't use it. So this is a definition I can always do. I get some formal power series in T. Note that this 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 thing starts at one. So therefore, uh, I can take the exponent just formally in poly polynomial rings. This 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 a priori lives in Q double bracket T. Okay, this is where this thing a priori lives. And, um, and, uh, and you can convince yourself that the statement that this function is rational, that it's a quotient of polynomials, is equivalent to the statement that uh, 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 the this, this sequence A dx is of the form sum of uh, alphas minus sum of betas. And furthermore, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the zeros and poles are now correspond exactly to one over those alphas and betas. So this is, this is how you get the zeta function as a natural uh, thing that will encode for you the supposed, uh, uh, this supposed behavior. Okay, so now the question is now, um, okay, I somehow told you that you can empirically see this. We did one example by hand together. You can play with a lot of examples. And actually in the case of, uh, if you have two, two, if you have only X and Y in one equation, uh, there's even a, 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 a proof of this fact, or the, now there's proof in all cases, but there, there used to be an, a proof already by Hasse. And the question is, Okay, let's say you, you notice this thing empirically. Why would conceptually such thing would be true? That, that's, that's somehow the, uh, 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 that, that's, that, that's the, it's a philosophical, philosophical question. 
and uh, uh, which is saying, okay, how, how, why, you know, why are we going to get uh, uh, the, uh, this kind of a statement? And uh, and uh, uh, the and 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 Vail came up with, with the conjecture that this is true in general. Also came up with the uh, 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 with, with with an idea. Why would such a thing be true? Okay. So so how how for this we need to think. How do you different. want to do this now or in your uh, next talk in uh, like after the break? I think I want to say something now, and I don't know okay. how, how much do I have before. I, I plan to talk about it in this part, but how much? Okay. Ten, ten minutes. Yeah, that fits. That fits what I. That fits more or less what I want. Okay, so uh, 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 so we look at the um, so we look at the at, at this set F Q to D, and the question is how to think about it. Well, um, um, he, here's the idea. Well, algebraic geometry tells us that the correct way to think about algebraic problems or the beneficial way to think about algebraic problems having to do with rings and solutions of equations as things like that, uh, even if we're doing it over some kind of a finite field, a very discrete and combinatorial object, is surprisingly for thinking about it as a space. We are looking at, at X as a scheme, and we want to think about this as a space. We draw some kind of a blob. And if, if, our, if, if, if we have a scheme which is defined over FQ, we have a map. The observation is that we have a map from this space to itself, which is called the uh, uh, Frobenius map. And now, uh, which I denote by? FRG, I guess, in this situation. FRG. Like if you need the geometric one. Yes. Okay, so what is this? Uh, 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 what is this? Uh, uh, oh, no, just, just to make sure, this is the automorphism of the, the, the endomorphism of X over FQ, right? Yeah, this is this is an endomorphism of, of, of X over FQ, uh, and it's uh, and it's 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 uh, it's uh, defined uh, as as follows. Uh, if if X is defined using let's say, let's do it in the affine case, okay? So we have a bunch. Of variables defining x, and we have a, a bunch of equations, right? Uh, f1, x1, well, let's call this x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 xn. We have f1 to xn, f2, x1 to xn, dot, 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 to fr, x1 to xn, and those are the equation. And uh, I want to say that given a solution, I can give another solution regardless of, uh, of what is the uh, uh, FQ algebra that I'm working with. And, and the map that I'm going to take is, uh, uh, the map I'm going to take is the map that sends uh, X I, uh, 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 the solution X1 dot 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 XN to the solution X1 to the Q, X2 to the Q dot 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 dot, dot XN to the Q. And so, but and I got the, the wrong Frobenius, so your Frobenius is not the geometric one, so it's without the G, just to not confuse everyone later, it's FRX. Okay, this is FRX. Okay, so X1 to Xn goes to X1 to Q, X2 to the Q, Xn to the Q, and uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 it's, it's, uh, you can verify that this is still a solution, because uh, uh, if you look, if you take one of the equations, and you take it to the qth power, it actually goes in. So every time this is a solution, it means that this thing is zero, it means that this thing is zero, it means that this thing is zero. Um, um, okay, and, uh, and, and if, we are, if we were thinking about, for example, solutions over the algebraic closure, right? Um, um, then we get that uh, 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 um, um, we have an action of this Frobenius on this. And the set of Q to the D solutions in Q to D is the same as the fixed points on this set with respect to the Frobenius to the D. 
Now, note uh, that this, 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 this is a statement about two countable sets, okay? Um, well, finite sets, but this is a countable set. It admits an action of this Frobenius by the power of D. Um, not so, so, uh, and in fact, this thing is a, is a, a, a on this set acts as a permutation. It's an automorphism. Uh, in, moreover, for every point you, you, you choose here, if you have some point X in here, then it has to lie in some finite field because those, you know, because of finitely many equations. So every solution has to, has to lie in some, uh, uh, some finite field. And, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, it, the Frobenius applied to it d times it itself. So it's, a, it's, a, it's really a, a, a countable set constructed of, on, of a bunch of, uh, a, a, with an automorphism, which is locally uh, of finite order, uh, but doesn't have a finite order on the entire set. So, so, so combinatorically it looks, and we're looking at the defeat. So combinatorically we're looking at something very discrete. But, uh, but the uh, uh, but algebraic geometry, the, vi the vile doctrine, as it's called, tell us that we should think about, you know, f, we should think about f, f of q bar is, looks like x of c. So th this doesn't make any sense. I can't evaluate my equation at c uh, because it, the coefficients are in a finite field. And, uh, but, and, but, but nevertheless, uh, we should think about this to be true. So, so, so the idea is that, for example, if we look at the equation y squared equals x cubed minus x plus one, right, it's true that its points of, are over a finite field, but we can pretend that, that you know, this equation is, is over complex points, so we can look at the solution over complex points, and this thing is going to look like a tori with a missing point in it. If we look at the topology, we now remember that the complex points is topology, and we look at this. And now we, we, we are saying that that's our hint. We should think about, uh, we should think about the, the situation of our algebraic variety in our over a finite field in our attempts to understand uh, the points over a finite field. We should try to think about it as some kind of a topology, of, of, of some kind of a geometric gadget, some kind of a manifold with, with a topologic palindromorphism. And that, so that's generally the way that algebraic geometry suggests that we should uh, think about uh, uh, um, algebraic questions, even when we are doing it over a finite field. That's somehow the amazing, amazing fact. Um, algebra knows about geometry even, even in the discrete case. But, uh, but why would that, why would such a thing would predict that, uh, uh, that, uh, 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 this, this funny formula of uh, geometric sequences uh, uh, summed and, and, and subtracted. Well, so um, there, is a, there, is a, there is a theorem in algebraic topology um, that says that uh, uh, the following, uh, uh, that says the following thing, that um, if we have, let's say we have a, a finite uh, uh, CW complex X, we have some map f from x to x, and uh, let's say that uh, f has finitely many uh, fixed points, um, then uh, 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 then the sum over x in fix of f of some number. Equals following sum. Uh, uh, the sum is okay, zero minus one to the k. The trace of f acting on the kth cohomology of x with coefficient zero. Okay. okay, so let me explain. So this is the leftist fixed points theorem. Uh, let me explain. Uh, uh, what's uh, uh, the two sides and think about them a little bit. So uh, the right hand side is a sum uh, along the fixed points of, of, of some number, some integer, which is called the index. Uh, you should think about this as, as multiplicity of the fixed points. 
In generic cases, when the map behaves transversely enough, I'm, I'm not really important right now what it means. If the map is nice enough, this is just the sum of one over. It's kind of, think about it as, you know, a polynomial don't have a double root. And this is therefore just the size of the fixed points. Okay. What do we have here? Well, F defines a map from X to X, therefore, uh, because cohomology is a functor, defines a map from this vector space to itself for every K. I assume it's a finite CW complex, so this is a finite dimensional vector space. We can take the trace, and we just sum those traces. Because it's a finite dimensional thing, this sum, it, it looks like infinite, but it actually stops. And I'm just taking the odd cohomology with negative degrees and the positive cohomology and the even cohomology with uh, um, positive. And, uh, um, and the, uh, so this is known as the Lefschetz uh, trace formula. Uh, now we are in the situation, we, we have some quote unquote geometric object and we have some endomorphism F, some F from it to itself. And we're interested in, in the behavior of the fixed points of F to the D. So um, pretending like everything always behaves nicely, we get that the number of the fixed point of f to the d is the sum of k to the zero minus one to the k trace of f to the d on h k x q. And um, okay, so uh, so we get that this sequence, which is the geometric analog to the sequence we have tried to analyze in the finite field case, looks like a, 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 a sums of sequences for even cohomology and, and subtraction of sequences of, of odd cohomology, which are the traces of f to the d on hkxq. Now, we, we have this, you know, we have this hk of f is a map from hk of x to hk of x. This is a map of vector spaces, some metrics. Um, and if we want to describe the, the trace, we can just say, let's take, you know, alpha one K to alpha DK, uh, RKK, where RK is the dimension of HKX, that these are going to be uh, the eigenvalues with multiplic multiplicity of this linear map. And we're gonna get the trace of f to the d. It's just the sum from i equals one to rk of alpha one k to the uh, to the d. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, um, so so here's the idea. The reason, you know, we're not talking about the proof yet, but the reason that we get those geometric sequences is because Lefschetz formula should be just true in our case. And those numbers, alphas and betas, <clears throat> what they should be, they should be a, 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 some, in some way, a, 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 um, they should be the uh, eigenvalues of the forbenus acting on the uh, uh, homology or cohomology will be more precise in the next talk. Uh, in particular, it tells us that the geometry of the, of, 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 of some way the geometry of the <coughs> equation we look at it should, should predict how many eigenvalues we're gonna have of posi with positive coefficient and how many negative coefficient. This has to do with the odd and even cohomology of the thing that we're looking at. Um, so, um, so, I'm, I'm, so let me just say that uh, 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 one last uh, thing before we go to question, which is that um, it's important to note that this, this is a brilliant uh, uh, philosophical approach, and it took a very long time to realize. It's a priori completely unclear where to find a cohomology theory that for algebraic varieties that will behave in a way that we will allow you to have this kind of a Lefschetz theorem and, and et cetera, et cetera. So this kind of a very, you know, it, it was a very ambitious program that, that, that you know, succeeded wonderfully, but it, it, it's somehow not entirely obvious when you, when you start, how would you do such a thing? Questions?
I have a small remark. Yes. So the formula, the formula, just uh, the formula uh, you wrote z equals the exponential thing. Uh, can you roll to it? So I'm talking about it. Uh, yes, this, 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 no, 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 no. So this yes. thing, uh, maybe you said it, but I'm not sure I catch it. That this is exactly the thing you get if you try to, to take the determinant of one minus t times a matrix and express it in terms of traces of its powers. This is exactly the thing you get. Uh, that is true. I, I, I didn't say it because I wanted, you know, so, the, the, so, so there's different motivations that you, give, you can give for this formula. Another, another thing you can do is you can, uh, you know, the, the, uh, um, um, the, there's something called the, uh, you know, there's the Riemann zeta function. And another, another reason uh, to, to, to think that this is a good definition is that you can see it's, uh, how it's related um, um, to, a, to a, some finite field version of the Riemann zeta function. But uh, so there's something very ahistorical about the way that I gave the motivation. But uh, I, I, I prefer this, 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 this story because I think, you know, it's, it, it really... No, I think it's an excellent story. I just said it because it's related to the last thing you said, that you take the traces of the powers. So if you have a matrix, the matrix that acts on the cohomology. So if yeah. you want to relate, yeah. So it just, it relates to the last formula you wrote. That's what I said. Uh, any other questions? Shai is going to talk about this stuff anyway, I think. <laughs> so.